Hi, this is Mr. Woodbury from College of the Sequoias. This video is for my Math 21 students. We're talking about Section 12.1, the goodness of fit test. The goodness of fit test is an inferential procedure used to determine whether a frequency distribution follows a specific probability distribution. For example, we could test that a six-sided die is fair. In other words, the proportion of ones, twos, threes, and so on are all equal to one-sixth. Also, we could test that the distribution of plain M&M candies in a bag is 13% brown, 14% yellow, 13% red, 20% orange, 24% blue, and 16% green. The claims here are one of two types typically, that all the proportions are equal, or we have claims made about three or more percentages. So under identification, the claim will involve claim percentages for three or more categories, or that the proportions for three or more categories are equal. You'll have a set of sample frequencies for each category. These are called the observed frequencies, or O sub i. The expected frequency, E sub i, for each category can be computed by multiplying the sample size, n, by the claim proportion for that category, n times P sub i. StatCrunch will compute those expected frequencies for us. The differences for the test, first in the null hypothesis, it will always be of the form P1 equals a certain number, P2 equals a certain number, and so on. H sub one will always be at least one proportion is different than claims. So we'll always use that wording for H sub one. That also means in the conclusion, there either will or will not be enough evidence to support that at least one proportion is different than claimed. There are no changes in step two. In step three, the name of the test is goodness of fit. And in step four, this is where we do the calculations. Enter the observed counts in one column. Enter the expected percents or expected counts in the second column. We'll enter the percents. Name the columns observed and expected. It makes them easier to pick when you're inside StackCrunch. Once you've typed those into StackCrunch, press stat, then goodness of fit, and then chi-square test. Select the column that contains the observed counts and the column containing the expected counts and click compute. There's one slight change here if all the proportions are the same. Rather than listing the expected counts in one column, we can just tell StackCrunch that they're all supposed to be equal. I'll show you what that's like in example two. The following two conditions must be met. First, each expected frequency must be at least one. And finally, no more than 20% of the expected frequencies can be less than five. So the easy way to check this first, if all the expected frequencies are greater than five, you're good to go. If some of them are less than five, then you have to make sure that they're all at least one and no more than 20% of them are under five. Here's the first example. 45% of Americans have type O blood, 40% have type A, 11% have type B, and 4% have type AB. A biology class tests the blood of 250 students. Of these students, 124 have type O, 108 have type A, 14 have type B, and four have type AB. At the 0.05 level of significance, test the claim that the claim blood type percentages are correct. So we have a claim about four categories in their percentage breakdown, 45% for type O, 40% for type A, 11% for type B, and 4% for type AB. We have sample counts listed, 124 for type O, 108 for type A, 14 for type B, and four for type AB. Let's start to write up the test. I'm going to start with the proportion for O is 0.45. Next, the proportion for A is 0.4 for 40%. The proportion for B is 0.11. And finally, the proportion for AB is 0.04. For H1, we'll use the sentence, at least one proportion is different than claimed. So, We'll assume that these four are all correct, and we're trying to show that at least one of them is not. 
the level of significance was 0 0.05, and the test appears to be goodness of fit. Now, if the conditions fail, there's no backup test here. So what we can do instead is combine two or more categories together in such a way that the expected frequencies or expected counts work out. Okay, let's go to StackCrunch. We'll check the conditions and compute the test statistic and p-value. Okay, I've entered the blood types in the first column where it says one dash observed. Those are the observed sample frequencies. And then in the third column where it says one dash expected, those are the expected percentages, 45%, 40%, and so on. To do the test, press stat, goodness of fit, chi-square test. The observed are in one dash observed, and the expected are in one dash expected. Be sure to display the expected counts because we need to make sure that those are all greater than five. Press compute. There are the expected frequencies at the bottom. All these are greater than five, so the conditions are met. So we'll take the chi-square test statistic 12.04 and the p-value 0.0072 back to our test. Okay, we found that chi-square was equal to 12.04 and the p-value was 0.0072. In this case, that is lower than 0.05 so we will reject the null hypothesis, and that means that there is sufficient evidence to conclude that H1 is true, namely that at least one proportion is different than claimed. Example two, the maker of a non-dairy ice cream holds a taste test. Subjects taste the non-dairy ice cream as well as three popular brands of ice cream. Of 120 ice cream eaters, 21 selected the non-dairy ice cream as their favorite while 42 selected ice cream A, 28 selected ice cream B, and 29 selected ice cream C. At the 0.01 level of significance, test the claim that ice cream eaters equally prefer the four different products. The claim again is that the people equally prefer the four different products. That's four equal proportions. We're talking about goodness of fit. The observed counts are 21 for non-dairy and 42, 28, and 29 for ice creams A, B, and C. Let's start to write up the test. The null hypothesis is that all four proportions are equal. In other words, the proportion for non-dairy, ND, is equal to the proportion for type A, which is equal to the proportion for type B, which is equal to the proportion for type C. And that is equal to 0.25 or 25%. We're dividing 100% into four equal groups, that's 25%. We could also have said that this is equal to one fourth. And when we get to stack crunch, we could enter the 0.25 for each expected percent. However, we can tell stack crunch that they're all supposed to be equal and not even need that column. H sub one is that at least one proportion is different than claimed. The level of significance was 0 0.01, and this is a goodness of fit test. Let's go to StackCrunch where we'll compute the test statistic and p-value while making sure that all the conditions are satisfied. Okay, I typed the types of ice cream in the column labeled ice cream, non-dairy, A, B, and C. The observed sample frequencies are in the column labeled 2 dash observed, and under 2 dash expected, I typed 0.25 or 25% for each of them. However, I'm going to let StackCrunch do it without that column. I'll show you what I mean. This can be done whenever there are three or more equal proportions. Press stat, goodness of fit, chi square test. The observed are in 2 dash observed, and then where it says expected, I'm going to switch it out to where it says all cells in equal proportion. Again, I want to make sure to display the expected counts. Press compute. Notice all the expected counts are 30, which is greater than five, so the conditions are met. Chi-square test statistic 7.67 and the p-value 0.0534. Now, we also could have used the 25%. Let me show you that we'll get the same results. 
I'm going to click on Options, Edit, and I'm going to switch Expected out to be 2-Expected, the 0.25 or 25%. Press Compute, and again, the same exact result. Chi-square is 7.67, the p-value 0 0.0534. That test statistic was chi-square equals 7.67, and the p-value was equal to 0 0.0534. When we compare that to the level of significance, it's greater than alpha. So in that case, we failed to reject the null hypothesis, and that means there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that H1 is true. In other words, that at least one proportion is different than claimed. So we were not able to prove that at least one was different than claimed. Example three, an algebra instructor tells his students on the first day of class that 40% will pass, 30% will fail, and 30% will withdraw that semester if historical patterns hold true. The class began with 38 students. 17 of the students passed the class, six failed, and the rest dropped. At the 0.05 level of significance, test the claim that the instructor made on the first day of class. So we have a claim about three percentages, and those expected percentages are 0.4 or 40 percent, 0.3 or 30 percent, and 0.3 or 30 percent for pass, fail, and withdraw. Now the observed counts were 17 passed, six failed, and we're told that the rest withdrew from the class there was a total of 38. So the missing count for withdraw has to make the observed counts add up to be 38. And if we start with 38 and we subtract 17 and six, we're left with 15 that withdrew. Okay, let's write up this test. The null hypothesis is that the proportion that passed is equal to 0.4. The proportion that failed, F, is 0.3 and the proportion that withdrew, W, is 0.3. I could also use the subscripts 1, 2, and 3 for those proportions, but I find that using the letters instead will remind me what they stand for. H sub 1 is that at least one proportion is different than claimed. The level of significance is 0 0.05, and for the test, this is a goodness of fit test. Now we'll go to StatCrunch, do the calculations, and make sure that the conditions are satisfied. Okay, I've typed the different outcomes under grade. Those are pass, fail, and withdraw. Next to that, in the column three dash observe, these are the sample frequencies or observed frequencies. And then finally, I typed the expected percents, 40, 30, and 30, in that column labeled three dash expected. Let's do the test, press stat, goodness of fit, chi-square test, observed for this problem are in 3-observed, while expected are in 3-expected, press compute, and there are the results. The chi-square statistic is 3.91 with a p-value of 0.1417. The test statistic was chi-square equals 3.91. The p-value was 0.1417. That is not less than the level of significance. So here we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis, and there's not sufficient evidence to conclude that H1 is true. So there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that at least one proportion is different than claimed. We were not able to prove that one of these was incorrect.